Let's say you have created a report with multiple charts and tables. In one of the charts, you realize that it will add a great deal of value if you added an additional column or series representing a calculated field. For example, a cumulative sum or moving average. But the main catch here is that you don't want to add that calculation to the semantic model because you are not going to use that calculated column in any other chart. So which means using the traditional measures and calculated columns are not the option here. This is where visual calculation feature of Power BI comes to the rescue. This is a new feature of Power BI which was added in February 2024 and it is still in the preview feature mode. Today, we will explore this new capability in detail and talk about its pros and cons. If you're interested, then keep watching. I have created this basic report page which analyzes the stock prices of Tesla. We will use this to understand and implement visual calculations. You can download this file from the link in the description below. So now let's understand what is visual calculation. For an average user of Power BI, learning DAX or writing complex DAX queries sometimes becomes a daunting task. DAX are really powerful, but they can also be complex and time consuming to write. You need to have a solid understanding of DAX syntax and logic to create effective measures. This often creates a barrier for those who aren't data experts. But what if we had a visual way of picturizing your calculations? And more importantly, what if you had some pre-made formula templates, which can be used to add some quick calculations like moving average or running total onto your visuals without even going into the data model. With visual calculations, it's now as simple as few clicks to implement these quick calculations. This means faster insights and less time spent on setup. Before we get started, we need to enable visual calculations in your Power BI file, because as mentioned earlier, this feature is still in preview mode. So in order to do that, you can come to file, click on options and setting at the bottom, and then click on options. This will give you a small pop-up window. Within this, click on preview features and scroll down and Enable this checkbox which says visual calculations. Once you enabled it, press OK. Now that visual calculations are enabled, it's time to explore the interface and see what this new feature brings to the table. Let's break down the visual calculation editor, explain how it works and guide you through the core elements that makes this tool so powerful. So in order to get to the editor, you need to first select a visual where you want to apply that calculation. Because as I mentioned earlier, visual calculation gets applied on a specific visual. So which means the backend data model will not get affected in any manner and only the visual that you've selected will be impacted by the changes that you make. So let's start by selecting this particular visual, which gives us the closing price of the shares for Tesla over a period of time. Okay. Now, once I select this, because we have already enabled visual calculation in the home tab, you will see a new button here, which says new calculation. You will not see this button unless you have enabled that visual calculation checkbox. Now, after you select your visual, just click on this button and this will take you to the visual calculation editor. At first glance, it might remind you of the formula bar in Excel but it's tailored specifically for Power BI visual environment. Here you can input your calculations directly and they'll be applied in real time to the selected visual. Now let me give you an example, okay? So we have two columns which were already there in the visual, which were date and close closing price. Along with that, I'm gonna add one more column and the way I'm gonna add it is by using the pre-made formula templates, which is available in visual calculations. To do that, you can just click on this FX button here and it will give you a couple of pre-made options. We're going to start with this running sum. Now, once you select it, it will give you a template. This is just a template of the function. You need to enter the parameters you require for your calculations. So in this field section, 
I'm going to replace this field with the column name. So I'm going to use this close column here. So now I'm saying, give me a running sum of the close column. Okay. And the name of the new column would be running sum. So you can change this to anything you like. I'm going to keep it as it is. And you can press commit here. It has given you a cumulative sum of your close column. Now, let me show you what this has done to the visual at the front end. In order to go back to the visual, just click on this back to report. And if you notice, it has added that new calculation column onto my chart itself. But if I show you the model or data model, it has not added that new column here. You cannot find that running sum column in this data model anywhere. Now we're going to discuss the pros and cons at the end of the video. So make sure to stay till the end because that's going to be very crucial for you to implement this solution into your own Power BI files. Okay. Now, because the running sum numbers are pretty high, that's why the other column, which was the closing price, it's not visible in this chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go back and see some other options which are available for us. Okay. In order for you to go back to your visual calculation, you can again click on this new calculation or else you can also edit the existing column that you created, which is the running sum by selecting the visual again. And in the Y axis column here, you'll see this running sum here, right? Just click on this drop down here and click on edit calculation. It will take you back to the editor window. Now from this, so I'm going to just remove this running sum from here. And instead from this FX button, I'm going to choose this moving average. And we're going to create a seven day moving average figure for this chart. Okay. So what we're going to do is within the parameters in the field section, I'm going to use again the close column and in the window size, I'm going to say seven because we need seven day moving average. Okay. And I'm going to click commit and it's going to create this new column for us, which is a seven day moving average. Let's go back to the main report and see how it's looking. So if you see now from a share price perspective, this is a very insightful chart for us because it's showing you the current closing price and it's also showing you the seven day moving average for a particular period of time. Now let's check one more technique here. I'm going to click on this new calculation and instead of removing the existing column, I'm going to add that running sum again, choose the field here as close and press on commit. Obviously it will create a chart where the axis numbers are too high. I'm not going to see the other moving average and close price here. So this chart by default is not that helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to your running sum, edit calculation. And within this, at the right side, you see an eye icon here. You can just simply hide your calculation from the chart. This is useful because you can choose to hide and unhide certain calculation within your visual based on your requirements. Now, if I go back, it will hide your running sum. It will only show you those columns which you have not hidden in your visual. So if you have observed with just few clicks, we were able to add a very useful information to our line chart. Doing this the traditional way with measures or calculated columns would have taken a lot more time and would have to be included in our data model. Now let's look at few more examples of the ready-made formula template. And this time we will apply them on the grid visual on the report. So let's come to the right side of the report here and select this grid visual. And just for simplicity, we will again focus on just the closing price here. And we will just use this closing price column for our calculations. Okay. But it's up to you. You can choose any column you want or multiple columns if you want. So just select this and again, click on new calculation. And before I apply any calculation, I just want to mention that all these numbers that you see, these are average numbers. So if I just open up this open price or closing price here, these are all average numbers. Okay. So let's apply a few calculations. You've already seen running sum and moving average. Let's see what this percent of parent does again in the field. I'm going to use close. And this collapse will also be close. And in this last parameter, which says access, it takes either rows or columns. Okay. So I'm going to use rows because all my numbers are in rows. If my data was in a transpose state, 
then I could have used columns as well. But for now, rows is more than enough for us. And then I'm going to press commit. Now let's add another column here, which would be percent of grand total. Again, I'm going to choose close column, access as rows and press commit. Now you must be wondering what is the difference between these two columns? Basically, percent of parent calculates the percentage of subcategory total. On the other hand, percent of grand total calculates the percentage of row against the final grand total, which is there at the bottom. Okay. Now let's add one more column here, which will be average of children. Field will again be close and access will again be rows. Commit to this. And if you notice this number is exactly the same as this close number. So which means even if I add an average from this option here, or we add this new column like this, it's going to yield the same numbers here. I just wanted to show you these three columns first in order for you to see what these columns does. But for our purposes, these three columns in this grid does not make any sense because these numbers are averages and calculating the percentage of averages from a grand total and from a parent grand total perspective does not make any sense. So I'm going to remove them. You can use them if your column has either a count or a sum, then this will definitely make sense. Okay. So in order for me to remove, I can straight away click on this cross icon, which will completely delete these columns or else you can also click on this hide from visual, which will hide it from the end visual. Now for this particular grid, what makes more sense is the following formula templates, which is versus previous versus next versus first and versus last. So what versus previous does is it compares your number with your previous row number. Okay. So I'm going to use this close and again for previous also, I'm going to use this close. So if you see the first row for close, it's showing us 216. And then for the second row, it's showing me negative 1.98. So which means it's comparing my second row, which is 214.14 with the first row. So it's simply subtracting this number from the second row number. That's why it arrived at this negative 1.98. Similarly, the versus next does the exact opposite. I'll receive a positive 1.98 here because it's comparing this number with this number. So it's subtracting this 214 from this 216. Okay. Next we have versus first, which is comparing your numbers with your first number in the grid. And then finally versus last, which is comparing your numbers with the last number in your grid. So you can choose to add any of these columns based on your requirements, but this is not the end of visual calculation. So these are some pre-made formulas that is available so that you can quickly implement some quick calculations, but you're also free to add any custom calculations. So let's say, for example, you want to see the variance between the open and close price for a particular given day. So all you have to do is you can just add a new calculation here, name anything you like, let's say variance, and then you just say open minus close. Okay. And then you can commit to it and it will create a new column using that same logic that you implemented and the logic that you give here in your custom formulas can be complicated logics as well. I just used a simple one for you to understand. Finally, I can choose to hide everything else. I'm going to keep close and then I'm going to keep the versus previous next first and last and then the variance as well in my final grid. If I go back to my visual here, it's going to show me all those columns with whatever formatting I already had in this grid. Great, right? Although visual calculations are really powerful, it's important to understand their limitations to use them effectively. So we'll discuss some key constraints to keep in mind, as well as best practices to help you get the most out of this feature. Now here are the few limitations that you should be aware of. There is no data export. So this here is an example. If I click on this three dots icon, you will see this export data option is disabled. This is because we already have columns which are part of the visual calculations within this grid. And that's why the export data button is disabled. In case we didn't have any column 
from the visual calculation in this grid, then we will see that export option. Second limitation is formatting restrictions. Let me show you this with an example. I'm going to go back to the editor window here and I'm going to make this percent of parent visible. Now, if you notice this percent of parent is a percentage column, but it's not displaying as a percentage. And even if it try, it does not give me any option to format this in a percentage format. So in order to bypass this, what we can do is you can write a format function outside of your final expression and convert this into a percentage. Let's say I want a two decimal number here and add a percentage sign, close the bracket, and this will convert your numbers into a percentage. But remember, once you do that, this gets converted into a string. So this is no longer a number. So you would not be able to sort it. You would not be able to apply any calculation based on these numbers. Okay. So remember that. And I'm sure once this feature evolves and comes into general availability out of the preview feature mode, this formatting limitation might be resolved at that point of time. But till then, we would have to live with it. And the final limitation is complexity in multi-level aggregation. So if your analysis involved multiple layer of aggregation, visual calculation might not always provide the level of control you need. So in such cases, you may need to revert back to your traditional DAX measures for more granular control. Now, here are some best practices to keep in mind while applying visual calculations. Use visual calculations for quick analysis. Keep this simple, combine with traditional DAX, and finally, keep monitoring your visual performance. So finally, at the end, I would just like to say that visual calculations are a fantastic addition to Power BI Toolbox, offering new ways to interact with and analyze your data. But like any tool, knowing when and how to use them is key. By understanding the limitations and following best practices, you'll be able to leverage this feature effectively without compromising on performance or flexibility. So that's it for now. I hope this content was helpful and you were able to learn something new today. In case you feel my content is helping you out, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.